From the 7,107 islands of the Philippines comes our sun-kissed warm congratulations to Hope Channel's newest milestone. We are proud to be a part of the Hope Channel team. This is the Lord's work. He will carry us through. And Team Philippines is with you all the way. To the worldwide ministry of the Hope Channel. Mabuha! Bringing hope the world over. Hope Channel. What if we told you you could add 10 years to your life? What if we told you you could reverse your disease? Would you believe us? Here's a fact. 300,000 deaths in America could have been prevented only if they had exercised 30 minutes a day for five days a week. But here's a secret. You don't have to be like them. We offer you no fountains of youth, no miracle pills, no radical surgeries. Just simple, practical advice guaranteed to add not just years to your life, but life to your years. I'm Wien. And I'm Mark. And once again, we would like to welcome everybody on another episode of Longevity, Longevity Secrets. Secrets. Now for today, we have the story of a 57-year-old pastor. Uh -huh. So Mark, when you hear the word pastor, what comes to your mind about the person's health habits? A pastor, you say? Hmm, I think the health habits of a pastor is very good. What makes you say that? Of course, pastors are not supposed to smoke, they're not supposed to drink alcohol, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to abstain from the things that would be harmful to the body. Yes, that's the stereotype of the pastor. Uh -huh. And yes, the pastor did follow all those things. He didn't smoke, he didn't uh -huh. drink alcohol, but he still had a heart problem. In fact, he was a candidate for heart surgery. Mm -hmm. But he entered a program, just a one-month program, wherein he had to walk 12,000 to 14,000 steps a day. So Mark, can you count how many steps you take in a day? Uh, I'm not sure on how many steps I take in one day, but I guess I better buy one of those devices that they call the stridometer, which helps you count how many steps you have taken a day because you wear it on your belt and that it would just stay there all throughout the day and it would help you give at least an idea on how many steps you have taken yes, throughout the day. Yes, you better start counting, Mark. Because with just 12,000 to 14,000 steps a day, the pastor that we're talking about uh -huh. now, he was able to get better. In fact, his total cholesterol dropped 37%. 37%. And 37%, that's not just it. His triglycerides dropped 6 to 5 percent and his weight dropped by 7 pounds. 7 pounds, you say. So he did not proceed with the heart surgery? Yes, that's a miracle. Wow. They found out that he did not need the surgery after all. So he did not have to go through the trauma, the medical expense of a surgery, uh -huh. just by the mere act of walking 12,000 to 12, 14,000 steps a day. That's really wonderful. So now... Mm -hmm. Let us invite uh, Mr. David Varona, the president of Need Health Ministries, to give us some points on how we would improve our exercise and our physical activity as we live day by day. You would recall that our place before, even with our parents or grandparents, we used to go to countryside. And here in the Philippines, it's on the province where in our next neighbor is beyond the hill or on the next mountain. It takes a minimum of around five minutes walk to reach your next friend. But today, people live most in the city, high dwellings wherein neighbors are so close and uh, there is a little or minimal exercise or movement that is needed. Going from your house to the workplace, well, instead of walking, just like in the country, this time we have lots of vehicles, we ride on buses, cars, 
Uh, today, a lot have motorcycles, the small ones. Others have bicycles. And once we reach home, instead of uh, moving around, what we usually do is, because we're just so tired, we want to get rest, or we relax at home and then start clicking on the channels on our TV. And also, we, we just want to rest there. No movement at all. And you know what? Going back to the scriptures, our creator has made us a garden home. We're in, in that very place. God taught us that physical work has benefit for our own system. And physical work is really needed. It's part of our humanity. And the development of the human body is much needed as we exercise. We would be seeing here in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 15, and we read, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to look at it, to watch it, to appreciate it. I think that's the right way. It is to work on it and to take care of it. So physical activity is incorporated therein. We are not there just to see all oh, and or appreciate everything, but we are there to take care of it. We are there to cultivate it. And what will happen, just in case we will not be moving around as specified by the scripture? Well, activity, we have to remember that. It is the law of life. And once we refuse to exercise our limbs, what happens? Oh, in a short time. We lose all the power to use them. And the law of nature says every faculty that is left unused, oh, it will grow into waste. What will happen? Later on, our muscles shrinks, and there are many things that uh, you would be feeling that is not good for your health. And the more... We will look today, there are more children, more family, parents, and, the, you know, the group or the community are doing on a less, less, and lesser exercise, lesser movement, because we think we are now on an automated world. So what are the hazards, or what happens then when we do not give enough exercise? Well... A life that is sedentary has been shown to significantly decrease our quality of life. And at the same time, as that decreases the quality of life, it also increases the risk for us to be susceptible to what we now have, the degenerative disease of this modern world. So, first... The thing that we can get if we will not be moving around is this heart disease. Secondly, we will have diabetes. And thirdly, osteoporosis. Another one is cancer. And of course, once we have these things, we will not be happy and will be much depressed once you have the heart disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, and cancer. And just to show how much does inactivity increases one's risk, let's see a study that was conducted. Uh, it was published in the Journal of American Medical Association, November 1993. And in the research indicated that individuals who, who lack regular exercise experience a similar risk of those who are smoking or those who do not or have high cholesterol rather. So if we will not be moving, we cannot just say, oh, I'm healthy, David. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this bad thing, but I'm not also exercising. Well, your risk of having this kind of diseases is just like you're having a smoke or high cholesterol level. So what are the benefits now if we move around? Benefits for our mind, benefits also for our circulatory system, benefits for our heart as well. 
Let's take a look. Once we have the moderate exercise on a day-to-day -day basis, it also helps lower down our high blood pressure and thus protecting the heart and the blood vessels. It also improves circulation and thus it will promote clearer mind, better sleep, and faster recoveries from the injuries or sickness that comes our way. Another one is exercise helps lower the cholesterol level. And with this, it will also decrease our risk of heart attacks and strokes as well. Another one is our rest. It will lower our heart rate. Okay, especially when you rested. I would uh, encourage you viewers, let's now try to get our pulse. We could have it from here on the neck or you could have it on your, the upper part of your arm here. But I would uh, check it out here and then we'll count on a 15 seconds and then multiply it by four to make it for a one minute. So let's do it. Are we ready? On your mark, go, let's count. Okay, stop. What have you got? Some would uh, go up to 60. Some would go up to 70. Or let's say for, for a general count, it's 80. If we have 80 beats per minute, that would total to 42 million and 48,000 beats a year. And you would say, I don't like to exercise because if I do it, oh, I would have faster heart rate and I'll not be that rested really. I will exhaust myself. However, it has been found out that once you go exercise, your heart beat or your heart rate lowers. So with that comparison of 70 beats per minute because we have taken a regular exercise that only sums up to 36,792,000 per year. And if we get the difference of this, that will sum up, get the difference at 5,256,000. So who has saved? Actually, in, in the beating of the heart or the working of the heart muscles, the person that has done some moderate exercise. So that's wonderful. After all, if you have exercised, 5 million rest of heartbeat a year is not a joke. It's really nice. It will give you more benefit because your heart is rested. Another one is once we have this uh, kind of a good circulatory system, it will give more blood uh, oxygen to our brain and of course we will have some mental benefits and look at what this exercise can do to our mind. Firstly, is it will improve the sense of our well-being. It makes you feel good. Secondly, it will increase your energy efficiency and endurance. And that won't let you down at the end of the day. Another one is, it will lift our depression, especially once you have your exercise outdoors. And another one that we have here is exercise reduces stress. How come it reduces stress? Because it will enhance your ability to handle life stresses, the normal situation, or that would just be easy for you. And remember that because you have a clearer mind, you will have reduced stress on that. You could concentrate on your work and the result would be more efficient, shorter time element, and more creative solutions that would come. And with that, as you leave your workplace 
of course you will be relaxed because everything's solved and you would also have a nice feeling once you get home. And so our family also will be benefited of that kind. Another is once we have a good quality of exercise, it improves also our sleep. We'll have better sleep, more sound, more sweet sleep, and there are other benefits that our body gets from this one. Well, talking about weight control, when we have good exercise, our body enhances and speeds up the metabolism. It also helps control our food intake. So we will eventually lose our weight in, in a shorter time. And once we have good exercise, because of the nice circular store system, our immune system will grow and it will be stronger. So it will be more, let's say, uh, uh, you will have a good or better defense system for the sickness that might come in. And for good exercise, it will also help lower the insulin requirement that is needed so that uh, we could have good and better metabolism, especially for the diabetics. This is one of the recommendations of which our medical doctors would be giving. Exercise also, because there is load on the bones. It helps strong, strengthen the bones, and it also would retain the calcium and other minerals on that. Now, one thing that we'd be asking is, then what's the best exercise for me. Oh, there, there are other people that would really be suggesting on different levels. But one thing that we have to remember is, will it be sustainable on my case? So if, if walking is the one that I can do on a daily basis, weekly until monthly, then that will be fine. If you say it, you could do it on a regular basis, the basketball or the, the hiking, the cycling, some would say, uh, I, I could better do it with gardening or farming. Well, that's fine, as long you do it. But here, we'll see the calories that are being consumed in 30-minute time span. Now, you would see here, like swimming, gardening, brisk walking, biking, and chopping wood. I, I don't intend that you would memorize this one, but... We are just showing that with men and women, you would notice that women are consuming lower calories than the men. That means once we have bigger body framework with the same activity, we spend more calories. And for women who have lighter framework, they have lesser calories. And so, even though with women, it also varies because there are women that have big frame, medium frame, and small frame. So with the same activity, the calorie burning also differs. Well, with this moderate exercise, now what can we do about it? There's one good news about this one. You could exercise at least every day, most of the day. And one thing good with that is you could have a total of 30 minutes on a day basis. And with that, it's not only once, but it's also accumulative. Oh, I like this one because if I have 15 minutes in the morning and I have 15 minutes in the evening, I have that, that privilege. Well, I have, I have that choice. Now, you could also do the 30 minutes in the whole morning or 30 minutes in the evening, or it's up to you as to what time are you going to do it. But one thing nice is it can be accumulative. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, or 15 minutes each, or at just one 30 minutes. That's really nice. Okay. Now, uh, we have a little correction here because it, it's not a moderate exercise guideline, but rather... It is our exercise research 
or the benefits that what they have done with this. It covers ages 20 to 82. There are three groups in this. The first group are the people who are fit, like the one that is pictured here. Another group uh, are the people who do not move at all. They are the ones at home. They like to, uh, we call them the couch potato. They just like to stay there. Another group is after hearing that ex they are not exercising, but after hearing the benefits of people who are exercising, they chose to exercise. So we'll, we'll have a review on this. The first group, exercise. The second group, does not exercise, while the third group changed their lifestyle. You know what? Ten years later, we are now going to review the death rate per 10,000. With this, they found out that those who are fit had only 40 deaths per 10,000. However, as you expected it, people who do not exercise have tripled the incidence of death. That's why there are 122 deaths per thousand for unfit people. But you know what? On that third group, there's one good news. Because these people who are unfit, who heard that exercising will do good, you know what happened to them? There were 68 deaths in one in that 10-year period on a 68 deaths per 10,000. So in, in that summary of the research, you could have a conclusion that exercise cuts the number of deaths from all causes in half. One thing good with this is, oh, I tell you, it is not too late. The, whatever age you have, it is not too late to start a new program. Uh, there are friends whom I know that started at age 40, 50, and one of the known uh, uh, joggers and walkers sometimes started at the age 70, and they somehow were still successful. So there's a good news that we have here. Even though at what age you are, you have heard that exercising is really nice, and you don't have well, tomorrow, I'd like to challenge you. Get your clothes, get your attire, prepare, and then bring your gadgets. Start to have your exercise. But if you don't have those gadgets, well, walking is still the best. And the idea here is keep on moving. If you have a garden, start gardening again. If you have a farm, go back to your farm and try to walk and walk because exercise really is doing good. Okay, so the idea is keep moving. There are times that we have, we, we, we chose to park to the nearest facility, but today after having this exercise uh, lesson, what you will do is you will park somewhere a little farther because it is advised that you, you would walk around 10, thousand steps a day just for the benefit of good health. So before, what you do is you park nearby. This time, you have to walk farther. And you know what? If you could find a place or stairs to walk up on that building, that's really nice too. That's better than go going on an uh, escalator or the elevator if you are going one or two uh, levels up or below and we are very much happy that our our human body is somehow built to work it is not built to just stay by and I would tell you and I also believe that in heaven God has prepared a work for us that we would cultivate I, I strongly believe that we will have a garden that we will cultivate, we will nurture, and just like his statement in the previous slides that we had, that we were made to work on it and to do it 
and to beautify it, we will be having our home, and we would like to beautify that on the physical aspect. Another one, God has promised us that once we regularly exercise, once we do our duties, once we incorporate physical activity, we will not get easily tired because it's like just the eagle here. We will be soaring high and here in Isaiah 40 verse 31, shall, we will be reading, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So it is my challenge to everyone that tomorrow you start up, start moving, start doing your exercise. And if you cannot do it alone, it would be best if you will find a buddy Someone that you would call in the morning, someone that would wake you up also in the morning, someone that you would enjoy in working or exercising in going around so that somehow the exercise will be sustainable. Because if you just do it alone, there are times that you will just declare a holiday. Oh, today there's no, no exercise at all. But if you do it with a buddy, I tell you, that will be sustainable and it will be longer. And for me, I find it really happy. Once I exercise with my wife, we, we go walking around, we play badminton, we have a little jog, and sometimes with my children. That's really nice because it's our family get together. And to close with, again, it is our challenge that you start tomorrow with your exercise. Thank you so much. Thank you also, Mark and Wian. Thank you, Mr. Verona, for such an informative lecture. So, uh -huh. Mark, we better start exercising, huh? Yes, we better start exercising every, every single day. day, yes. Truly, knowledge is power. Without power, we won't be able to make the right choices that would allow us to get rid of the worst disease of all, which is ignorance. But always remember that knowledge is not enough. Yes. We must apply the principles of proper nutrition, mm -hmm. regular exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, fresh air, rest, and of course, trust in God in our everyday lives. But let's not just stop there. Let us share these secrets with others so that they may know what we have here with us. I am Mark. And I am Wien, inviting you to join us on the next episode of Longevity Secrets. Bringing hope the world over. Hope Channel.